But GJ's a crazy pair. She is crazy. Yeah, man. you know she, what I'm saying? She likes to move. She yeah. is fluid. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my she God. She was pissing me off like maybe a. Hi right, guys, we're here with Jordan, another funded trader. Welcome back to the TFT podcast. He recently got a twenty three hundred dollar payout. Jordan, it's good to have you here. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm glad y'all brought me out here, man. It's my second time in Miami, and I wouldn't want to be out here any other way. Let's go. Yeah, welcome to the pod. So, um, yeah, tell the people, you know, a little bit about where you're from and how you, how'd you end up at the pod, dude? Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I'm from uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Been trading for four years. Um, prior to coming to TFT, I was trading with FTMO. Well, was trading with them, and then I went for a couple of accounts, kind of had like a, I guess you could say a, a learning curve, <laughs> and um, found out about TFT in uh, January, and, um, you know, I uh, went for an account with them, got my first account, and, you know, Alan, uh, Angelo hit me up and emailed me and pretty much invited me out here. How'd you, uh, so how'd you find TFT? Really? Man, so, um, <clears throat> like I said, I had been going with FTMO for the past, you know, two, three years, and... It was the 10-day rule, man, because it's like I don't need 10 actual trading days to make, you know, the 10 percent, you know, right, maybe right. a course of a month, you know, because I'm not going to trade every day of the week. But, you know, trading days wise, I'm only expecting about four or five days. So it's like, you know, you're sitting in that rest time, you lose the momentum, you know, and then it's 20 days before you see the account. But uh, basically, there's some research. Uh, I came across FTMO. I think it's my Forex funds mm -hmm. and um, TFT. And, uh, and I saw the different account types. I saw the rapid account and, you know, I saw the reviews too. I mean, it's crazy how much or how active y'all are in the community and everything like that and how involved, you know, the traders and uh, everyone is and I guess providing feedback. So there was yep. a sense of security and everything whenever I uh, made my decision with TFT. Yeah, no, for sure. It's actually kind of wild, uh, the FTMO, how they still have the 10 days. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just never got rid of that. Yeah. Because it does take a long time to get funded with them. It does. Realistically. I mean, I mean, you know, you're looking at 20 days till you actually get the account, you know, con uh, considering you have, you know, optimistic or um, optimum uh, trading conditions. Best case scenario. Exactly, yep. exactly. And then, you know, it's another 30 days until your payout. So, uh, you know, TFT, three days, you can have your account. And then even with Charles Royal and Stan, I think that the maximum trading days y'all make is what five days a phase. Yeah, you know five days, but it's three on standard as well. So, so it's, right, yeah. So it's better, obviously, than FTMO because the rap, the Royal and Standard is thirty days the first payout, and the Rapids fourteen. Right, and yeah. then you have the you have the night too, which is the, the one phase, which that's pretty cool too because yep. I mean you know. But yeah. people be hating on that though, they'll draw down the relative, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's but a bit different. It's hard. It's but hard. But see, it's cool because it's like it's a it's more of a patient thing. So like yeah, the drawdown's less, but you have an unlimited time frame to trade or you know, time uh you know, there's no time for What do you time. what do you think on that, the unlimited time? Because new a lot of new prop firms are doing that now, right? So right. What, what are your thoughts on it? It's a hot thing. I think it's good because I've heard of a lot of funded traders risking anywhere from like 0.5 to 0.25, you know, and you want to preserve that capital once you get funded. So you, it's, you know, you don't have that extra pressure to meet the deadline, which mm -hmm. I don't like putting deadlines on my trading. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it basically gives you the ability to trade the, uh, you know, the, uh, the challenge accounts like you want to trade the funded account with less risk and, you know, basically preserving the account. So I think it's a, uh, it's a pretty neat concept. Have you tried any, any of the ones with it? No, I don't like to risk for less than 1%. So it's <laughs> like, you know, and I'm, any with my trading, I can lose the first trade by getting prematurely wicked out. So it's like I want to be able to re-enter, and it's like you know, worst case scenario, I could lose two percent in a day. But you know, with the drawdown being three percent on a daily basis, that's that's a right, tight, right for the know. for the night. So you're right. big on the the rapid. I am uh, yeah. the rapid. I, see, I would do the royal. I would do the standard too. But um, you know, I just an individual has to confine their trading enough to be profitable. I don't mm -hmm. really want anyone else, aside from obviously the risk management, which is understandable, mm -hmm. I don't want to have to play by the rules of anybody else. That's the whole mm -hmm. reason I want to trade. Right, right. So, you know, I get that's a weird, that's that. an interesting complex because traders are trying to be, you know, trading by no one's rules but their own. Exactly. But then the prop firm's like, here's the rules. <laughs> exactly. You know so what I'm like, saying? I, I thought like, I, you know, I thought I did my own thing. It's like, now I got to buy by someone else's rules. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, I'm, you know. But listen, it's uh, at the end of the day, the the risk reward is worth it with the prop firms, it is. right? It um, is. So what's been the what's been the strategy for you? Like what you're you're working right now? Like how often you buy challenges? You know what I'm saying? What's the deal? Um, so up until 
Man, it was just really consistent failures. Prior, uh, I honestly didn't really find my consistency till about December, January. Mm-hmm. So prior to that, it was really just buying challenges, losing the money, putting money in account, uh, and you know, basically just watching my money go down the drain, so yep. to say, or investing it to myself. But now, uh, being funded everything like that, basically my goal is to see about five to six hundred thousand dollars in funding by the end of the year, and then uh, you know, shortly after that, basically scale up and max out my funding through TFT. Let's go. So let's get it. Yeah, and uh, so the standard, although right now it doesn't have the unlimited days, we are going to change it to have the unlimited days okay. uh, for phase phase one and two, which should be you know pretty pretty solid. So it should be a good option there. So it seems like for you, it's very important to work with a firm um, that's you know reliable, that's right. professional, that has a track record, all this, because you don't want your money to to obviously go to waste. So what are right. some more things that? Because there's people out here probably watching this that are like, I want to try these new firms, this and that. What are some uh, red flags or things people should look out for when looking for a firm? Man, you know. There's a lot. When people are pissed, they're going to air out their thoughts. So, I mean, you know, you can really go look at any of these firms. You do a little bit of research, you know, Trustpilot or any of these, uh, you know, basically these these websites that, that you can go put public reviews on. And, you know, all it takes is me seeing about one or two people not getting a payout you know, them talking about, I don't know, uh, you know, just the servers being crappy, like our major lag and stuff like that. Any, you know, it doesn't really take much because we're talking about no, no one wants their money played with. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, a couple of bad reviews and I'm pretty much not really fond of that trader anymore or that firm, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, man, it really just kind of comes back to, I think, to like what you, you know, what you kind of feel yourself pulled towards. Mm-hmm. You know, some traders are probably cool with the 10-day rules. And, you know, of course, FTMO has been the game since 2015, so they may just, you know, drift towards that. But, you know... Uh, I could say, at least in regards to TFT, there wasn't any like, man, I just don't know. It was, you know, I saw TFT, I did a little bit of research and nothing rose, raised any red flags. So I guess most importantly, you know, this is, I don't really want to see any red flags uh, personally. Right. Yeah. You don't, I mean, at the end of the day, you're putting your hard earned money in. Exactly. Right. To try to put this in. So we were talking a little bit about before this, like, uh, you know, how hard it is to really make it in this game. Right. right. So. For you, I mean, you know, tell us a little bit about like the journey, you know, where'd you get started and everything like that? Um, so I started trading in December 2018. Um, I found out about Forex through uh, IML. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard about, I'm pretty sure you are familiar with yeah. IML Trade House. And they were big in Louisiana, like, I mean, taking they, over. They kind of died off a little bit now. They did. And yeah. I, I've heard of IM because they rebranded to IM Academy at mm-hmm. one point. I think they had, I don't know what they had going on, so I won't speak on it too much, but mm-hmm. um they did die off. So that's actually how I got in. And it's crazy because my friend, one of my best friends, actually, he was just hounding me about it. And I had just started training as an air traffic controller. Uh, mind you, this was December 2018. So um, after about two months of hearing him talk about it, it's like, you know, I kind of understood. I saw a little bit of the potential. Like, you know what? Okay. So I went ahead and got into it, stayed with them for about six months. And so uh, so we're in 2019. Now about mid-2019 to like, you know, 2020, the end of 2022, I guess you could say it was really more so just me, you know, focusing on the charts and like actually teaching myself and kind of just not really being a part of any mentorship program because I was kind of scarred. You know, mm-hmm. IML just kind of had a bad taste in my mouth about everything with Forex being a scam. Right, right. So it's like I just didn't want to, I was like, I'd rather bet on myself than, you know, basically go out on that. But um. I just invested a lot in chart work, man. Like, I used to study about 10 hours a day, man, and uh, 12 hours a day. Like, I would just obsess over it. I was reading psychology books and about, you know, just uh, basically, like, you know, ba- you know, like universal laws and stuff like that. And I honestly will say this. I did, it's like all the pressure built up, built up, built up until about February 2022. Um, my dad basically gave me some prosperity and abundance scriptures, told me, read them every morning, don't miss a day. And at the end of the a, a year, I'll be where I want to be. Mm-hmm. So this was about where I started to see my growth and like just see my finances start to open up all around, let mm-hmm. alone trading. Uh, needless to say, February 13, 2022, two days after reading the scriptures every day for a year, I had got my first account since, you know, uh, trading with FTMO two years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, that God was... Bless, God bless, bro. <laughs> bro. Right. I mean, like, because I was doing everything, man. Like, I had sticking... I had a house, uh, you know, whenever... Uh, I had a house from 2020 to 2022. I actually sold it about a year ago today. Mm-hmm. I sold it June 15th. That's when I closed, uh, closed mm-hmm. out. But, you know, I had like the I am healthy, well, blessed. I had all that like all around the house. I would mm-hmm. listen to affirmations, falling asleep for like six months straight on my iPad next to my ear. Mm-hmm. Would not go to sleep without those I am wealthy, healthy, wealth, uh, wealthy, healthy and wealth uh, affirmations. But it's like 
I saw no return on the charts, man. Like, you know, just... It, that it, must have been, like, super discouraging, right? Was it? But it's like I, you know... I was in that traffic controller, paid well, mm -hmm. but I'm seeing Q Banks do hundred thousand dollar days. I'm like, I'm not about to make two hundred thousand dollars in a year. I could do this in a day or a week. Right, it's like right. I'm not quitting. You know, it's, it was all or nothing. So I just had to keep digging. And uh, man, you know, when my dad pretty much gave me that that message, or like you know that that prophetic word, whatever you know, call it, it I just knew it was game changer. Which I can actually go in on that too, uh, and I'll make it quick. But when I resigned from my job, that was. Um, I put my informal two-week notice in June 2022, didn't tell him, and long story short, the next day after I put my informal notice in, I'm scared as hell, you know, I'm paying my bills, I'm making good money. Mm -hmm. um, he basically sent me a text, two scriptures again, uh, basically just talking about, confirming that I made the right decision. I asked him why he sent the scriptures, he said he didn't know, it was just on his mind. Uh, fast forward six months later, January 2021, I couldn't pay my mortgage. All my bills went to the house. He basically said he had a dream that I wasn't able to pay that mortgage. So, mm -hmm. you know, those were the two times where I knew that, you know, man, my dad's getting, you know, God is really speaking to him and like kind of mm -hmm. like putting his stuff on his heart. So when he sent me those scriptures and told me to read them for a year, it was no doubt that this, I knew what was, was going to come out of it. Isn't that, isn't that wild? So give the, give the people some background. So what does your father do? Um, so whew, my dad had a long path. Uh, so right now... He's a, he's a pastor, actually. Uh, he's got his master's in theology. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he has a, a regular full-time job. He's actually in the midst of transitioning jobs now. But um, he's uh, in the safety field. He's been like a loss control consult a senior loss control consultant now for, uh, you know, a handful of years. Mm -hmm. But um, he's, uh, and he's just heavy in it, too. Like, we, we're both big on studying, like, the subconscious and, like, neuroplasticity and, um, you know, basically just, like, the hardwiring of the brain and stuff like that, you know. Uh, he kind of made that bridge for me connecting like you know because science explains neuroplasticity like you know mm -hmm. the actual breaking down of neural pathways and creating new neural pathways so that you can develop and unlearn or slash unlearn new habits mm -hmm. and you know success is i think they say it's habit based it's, it's your daily habits or your daily routine oh, oh yeah big time <clears throat> so uh but you know man some of this stuff that we have to unlearn to become successful out in trading you know or just in anything but trading i think is the hardest one of the hardest things to mm -hmm. you know master um Man, it's just, it, it's, it's, a, it's really hard to break free from because it's like, you know, anyone watching this or any trader could say, when you took that losing trade, you knew it wasn't the trade you were supposed to take, but it's like, you just couldn't not take it. And then so you look at it, you'd be like, okay, let me not buy into resistance next time. Oh, it's Thursday now, take the same trade. And it's like, man, what the, you know, what the hell? I knew I wasn't supposed to take this trade. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, I guess... He so bring it back to my dad. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with him knowing everything about the subconscious and auto suggestion and stuff, he basically just kind of was able to make that connection for me uh, with the scripture to basically help me kind of unlearn those learning habits that were keeping me from being profitable. What were some of those habits you think? Man, um, personal habits. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it was it was definitely personal habits, um, but I didn't know at the time. Uh, so about eight months after quoting, or six months after quoting the scripture, I just had this day, man, where I bust out crying, like mm -hmm. bust out crying on the way to see my girlfriend out in Houston. Um, and like, basically, I just realized how ungrateful I was. Like, man, like I just look back on my life and how blessed I was and how even though whenever I quit and I was struggling and like, you know, bills were barely getting paid, they were getting paid. Mm -hmm. And I can go in detail on that too, about like just magical or, you know, supernatural ways. But I just it just hit me, and it's like I was projecting that ungratefulness on the charts. Like you know, always everything you could do wrong, I was doing wrong. I mean, at one point, man, I was waking up every day and losing for like four months straight. It's like, man, did I <laughs> make the wrong decision quitting my job? God damn. And um, yeah, I just you know, with me being so ungrateful, and I also wasn't a present person either. Like I was always trying to analyze and, and quantify every future outcome without just living in the moment. And, That's, um, that ain't good. It's not, man, because no. it's like you can't. You can't. You got to be in the moment. You'll I, never enjoy your life. You right? won't. No. And I got to credit my girlfriend for that because she really opened me up to like just being present and stuff like that, And mm -hmm. um, which you know she came around the same time I started quoting the scriptures and whatnot. But I think those two biggest things were my biggest hindrances, and you know they kind of came from me basically just that repetition of basically you know through auto-suggestion, hearing the same thing and getting my mind frame right. So that I could, you know, kind of walk in that success of a, uh, of a consistent trader.
Yeah, there's actually. I'm gonna pull pull this thing up. There's this thing I was reading. Water. Yeah, I, there's this thing I was reading by this uh, this Navy SEAL, and someone asked him uh, a question. His name is Chad Wright, and they like asked him. They're like, "Why of all people were you able to, you know, become a become a Navy SEAL?" Let me see if I could uh, if I could find it. Is this the guy that? Uh... Oh yeah, here it is. Okay. All right. His name is Chad Ray, some like lunatic. You could look him up on Instagram. <laughs> uh -huh. He's fun to follow though. Like he's super inspiring. Right. So someone asked, why were you one of the few men who made it uh, through SEAL training? Answer was simple. I'm extremely good at staying present and focusing on the task at hand. I thrive in crisis and uncertainty. I never have a plan B. I value durability over performance. I'm patient, especially amongst monotony but the one the one that stuck out the most to me is just like i'm good at being present it is right you know what i'm saying like, right even in the face of chaos in the face of everything going wrong right you're just truly like you're not thinking you're not overthinking like you're just truly living in the moment like whatever happens it's like a belief like i trust right. myself exactly to make the decisions and whatever happens happens and it's crazy you say that too because it's like i realized and you know like i said my girlfriend man she really opened me up to it she had a great example her father's like a really present person mm -hmm. but um man like the moment i really because you know when you first learn it the intrusive thoughts they still intrude you mm -hmm. know like you know how to be present now yeah. but it's like it doesn't get it's not necessarily easy just not to do it now mm -hmm. and so um man but once i learned to bring that presentness to the charts, it's like everything I had learned from like the past three years, I was actually able to live that on the charts now. So like, you know, and I obsessed over it, man. Like I had the tower, we worked four days a week, um, had three days off. So on one of my off day or one of my, you know, weekends, I was just fed up with losing, man. Like I had, I was fed up. And so I had printed out gold and GJ and I had it was probably with 40 pictures. I had posted them all on my wall and was studying them, man, for like the whole weekend, like 48 mm -hmm. hours, you know, I wasn't wasting any time. And um, it did nothing ultimately, you know, mm -hmm. but once I learned to just take that presentness and put on the charts, it's like I would see and be able to read these patterns that were playing out. And it's like, I mean, it was almost like, it was just crazy, you know? This is, yeah, this is how I, I explain it because people are probably wondering like what this is. It's right. almost like um, it's <clears throat> the... Uh, the presence is removing like doubt and security and fear and greed and all these right. emotions that tie you down. And they basically, you're letting the flow of these, your ideas and your thoughts and whatever just come through. And at some point after you stop resisting all of that, it just like becomes more quiet, like in the mind. And then from there, it's almost as if when the mind becomes super quiet and at peace, right. you can access a shit ton of information. You're right, bro. You're you know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, like, cause right. I, I've felt, I felt this before. Like that's, yeah. how, that's how I feel realistically. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like on the, and it's a lifestyle too. Yeah. And like you know, even with me, I found that comfort and like you know, I put that for me. The way I found that comfort, and that that sweet spot, that peace of mind was. You know, like the pressure's not on me, it's on God. One of the mm. scriptures I remember uh, is he gives me the power to get well. Mm -hmm. So it's like anytime I feel like I'm losing it, it's like, no, the pressure's not on me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it relieves me. It kind of brings me back to that present moment. It grounds me. And it allows me to like really flourish and operate in, you know, what I've trained myself to do mm -hmm. on so, these charts. So you asked me before, like, um, you know, about the religious thing, universal law, whatever. Like for me, because it sounds like you lean, you know, like you're saying, you lean on God, right? Heavenly, and he helps right, to guide you, heavenly. right? And for me, it's like, what do I lean on that I have faith in? And I just try to live as naturally as I possibly can be. Right. So like, and you could say this is religious or spiritual, whatever, but it's through the food, it's through the movement. It is, I agree. Like I'm trying to become the like healthiest version of myself. Ultimately, like I'm not trying to obstruct myself. I'm going to put you onto the equation. I was telling you over there. Okay. So the equation, um, and I, I've said this in another pod, um, the equation is basically like, Vitality, which is life, right, mm -hmm. equals power minus obstruction. So power is essentially like you waking up, saying your affirmations, reading your scripture, you know, working out, like you pass somebody on the street, like you don't say fuck you to them. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, like right, right. you're a good person. Like that, those are powerful things that you're doing in your life. Right. Like it's positive. Right. And then the obstruction is like you eat too much, you fucking don't work out for a week, right. you, know, you slap somebody in the face. Like <laughs> right, right. those are all obstructions. So it's like the more obstructions that you do than power equals your vitality. Like you're gonna be less, you're gonna have less vitality, less life force. Right. You? So if you focus on these things that are powerful, which are habits, right? These healthy habits, your communication <laughs> to people, if it's the charts, like not over trading all this, sh like 
then you're, you're, you'll be abundant. Your yeah, fertility exactly. will be elevated. You'll be living in abundance. So that to me is a very simplified version of, of like all of this. And even in the mind, like people were wondering how the fuck do I quiet the mind, right? <laughs> right like, they're right. like, how do I do this? And it's ultimately, it comes down to that formulas and, and you can either talk about habits or you could talk about like lies, right? To right. yourself. So it could be the equation of like, how many times do you make a promise and then break that promise and it turns into a lie. Right. So if you like, you know what I'm saying? If you tell yourself like, oh, I'm going to wake up and study or oh, I'm going to get on the charts at this time or oh, I'm not going to take trades at this time. And then you lie. You know what I'm right. saying? Like you don't follow that. You don't stick to the plan. Then those become obstructions to your, you know, to your success. OK, I Ultim got you. ultimately. So it can be played in that regards. And I think ultimately why more and you don't become wealthy. And, and I'm not trying to be like some wealth guru. You know what I'm saying? But nah, like, like you literally don't become wealthy until right. you follow some subset of this formula. If you have less you obstructions have exactly. than power, like you ultimately will become super fucking wealthy. Right. Like, and I'm saying that in many different ways, like it could be financial, spiritual, physical, like it could be all three. Right. You know and see, saying? like I was always big on kind of having that clear conscience too, because I never wanted to get all this money and then be like miserable or like, you know what I mean? Like trying to find like outside joy because mm -hmm. ultimately coming from like, you know, rags to riches, so to say, or, or middle class, anything is not wealthy. You're trying to get mm -hmm. the wealth, you know, you really have to pretty much embody and pretty much live that life as if you already are there and mm -hmm. you're not. So it's like, you gotta just have that ability to shift your focus. And it's that much harder to shift your focus if you over here beating yourself up because you know, you ate a pop tart last night at 12 o'clock or something, you know what I mean? Like whatever it may be, you <laughs> broke your diet, you know? Bro. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. you know? So That's so funny. <laughs> having that clear conscience is really, you know, you, you it's, it's, it's necessary, I really well, believe that. Well, listen, bro, like this is ultimately the deal is, and I'm just saying this based on my experiences, mm -hmm. is like the, you're saying that when you're still in like the middle class, you don't have money or whatever, um, it's hard to essentially have the mentality of the rich. And that's, th this is what it boils down to is being rich financially is essentially just a mentality. It it's, a, it's a mindset, 100%. you know what I'm saying? And right. if the mindset is sustained for X amount of period of time and you find something you enjoy doing, then you will become rich. Exactly. You start reaping those yeah. seeds that you plant. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, that's like, you know, it's so easy, you know, cause I'm, I, I believe nothing is impossible. So I mean, it's like, you know, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever your need for, it's so easy to continuously meditate and focus on that problem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to get to the point to where you shift yourself. So it's like, okay, I'm not sitting here and thinking about like the, you know, this or that, the bills is due or like, you know, the fact that I failed the last challenge or, you know, this and that. It's like, you got to shift your focus. So it's like, I am consistent. You know, I'm doing this. I've done this. It's like, okay, I'll just get on the charts and be present, be grounded. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you, it, it'll, it'll flow. And it goes to anything, you know, I mean, obviously way outside of trading because success, this, that's pretty much the equation for success in any field. As hard yeah. as I feel. Well, listen, this is like my this is like my opinion is that when you're in the because you could be in the quote unquote middle class and still live paycheck to paycheck, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Right. People don't realize that. Like you could be a doctor and you overspend and exactly. you're like it's like you're a paycheck away from homelessness. That's what I'm saying. Like people don't like overlook that. So I think ultimately like the the middle class, you know what I'm saying? And like these, this group of people is, uh, is, is ultimately when it comes to like the mindset of success, like they're struggling with that mindset. And then if you're born into that, you have, you're, you're in a tough spot. Like you are right. you're in, like the low, like the, obviously you're poor, you're in middle class, like you're in a really tough spot because you don't have any, um, you haven't, you haven't built up any foundation. You know what I'm you saying? Like you have right. no wealth in your life. Like right. you're always touching the dirt. You know what I'm saying? Like you're always near the bottom. So that's when you're talking about like, oh, my bills aren't being paid, this and that. Like that's being near the dirt. You know it what I'm saying? Right. Like, and so for you to get beyond, it's almost like trying to uh, 100x a 1k account. <laughs> yeah, right, you know what I'm saying? Right, like for right. you to get beyond that to where you never, not never have to pay bills, but like, you know what I'm saying? Your bills are sustained for 10 years or yeah. some shit. Like it takes a lot to turn that flip. Dog. You know, it takes it a lot does. of energy, a lot of commitment, a lot of a lot of focus. And you um, talk about trading, man. I mean, like, you know, I mean, bro, like I've seen so many stories of guys having like $60 in their bank account 365 days ago. And then, you know, now they're up, you know, within a week or a month span, they're up $100,000. Like, you know, and knowing that 
the 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 line is that thin. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. some abs- that's some absurd numbers, man. Like you know when you you tell people, yeah, I made a hundred thousand dollars last week. Their jaw drops. That's a, <laughs> that's two years worth of work. So right, it's like right. they can't comprehend it because it's like their financial thermostat isn't. You know, it's not. It hasn't reached that level. Right. But you know the reality is, I mean, you really can take yourself from any situation. If you could just flip that mindset, it's like I, you know, like I kind of told you a little bit earlier, but it's like I came from a lot, you know, mm-hmm. and um, it it just got to the point where it's like I felt like the pressure was too much for me, and that's why I confide in those scriptures and God so much because it's like I wasn't gonna be the ten x one hundred k account or a hundred x one hundred k account, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be, or even it's hard to make millions out of dirt, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I didn't come from the dirt, so to yeah, say, but yeah. you have to, it's it's just too much for like the I feel like the physical mind to like really. You know, fathom it puts too much pressure on you, in my opinion. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put you uh put you on or just say like some sort of uh, analogy, right? Some okay. sort of some sort of idea, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's hard to to make a million out of the dirt, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like, how do you make a million out of the dirt? Is you have to go into the fucking dirt, you, and, you I, and I say exactly. that, and I, I say that you gotta lean into the dirt, and you gotta literally. If it's like, say it's a field, like you gotta literally plant, you gotta plant, like everyone talks about right. plant seeds, but it's like, before you plant the seeds, you gotta dig the fucking holes, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Before you dig the holes, like you gotta understand what are you gonna do once you even dig the fucking mm-hmm. holes, you know what I'm saying? So there's like precursors to even planting the seeds, and I think that if people just, if people just accepted where they were at, I think that's step one. Like, but it's so hard, and you know, the, the game, like, you know, you saying that, that's, that's if anybody, like whoever's looking, that's game, you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. that's real game. But, you know, it's, I could see, I've been a person, it's hard to be present because you're going through hell. No one wants to accept they're in hell, but you kind of got to accept you're in hell to actually get out. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, and you know, being present in the storm, basically Mm -hmm. what I'm saying by that. But, you know, that's some real game. It's just, you got to develop that discipline and that, you know, renewing of your mind, so to say, to actually get to the point to be able to do that. Well, this is why, so speaking, this is actually interesting. So speaking of that, so when you're in the dirt and, and the, the uh, fears and the anxiety is coming from like your bills, you know what I'm right. saying? And like real shit that's like, yo, if I don't pay this, I don't have <laughs> food, right. I don't have a house, right. like I'm fucked, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm in a bad position, like though, though, that's really hard. So it's like you were saying, how do you get over that? Because that's such a powerful thing. It's like, that's why a lot of people at that point do lean into God, you know what I'm exactly saying? And lean right. into like, or not even, maybe not even God, if you're not religious, right. it's like the spirit go, they go like super spiritual, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? They get into yoga. It's gotta be deeper this. than self. They get into deep self. Like they start to really go deep because they have fucking nothing. Mm-hmm. And the, not only do they have nothing, they have all of these like arrows being fl- thrown at them. You right. know what I'm saying? So that's like, it, that's the thing is if you are in that position, like you, have to find something. You do. I mean, it. you got to think about like this, man. Like you could be going through hell. You know, let's just say, you know, anyone would be like, okay, well, just get a job. But it's like, what if you're just in so much debt? You have so many bills. A job really is like a drop in the bucket. You know, your <laughs> only breakthrough is, you know, the only thing that's going to get you head out of water mm-hmm. is the breakthrough. Yep. So it's like, you got to stay focused on that. Stay present in that while chasing it. I mean, you know, and it could go bigger than just wealth. Like someone might have healing for an incurable disease. I believe, you know, like I said, anything's possible. So even with the incurable disease, yeah, you could take the holistics, you could do this, you could do that, but it's like ultimately, you know, it, it's about shifting your focus and affirming and speaking stuff. And you know, that's kind of another thing. But exactly like you said, you have to go deeper than self with a, the, the the problems that you know are just they're bigger than you. They're way bigger than you. you. Know? And and listen, those problems are generational. They you know are what I'm generational. They're generational. They're generational. They're generational mistakes that have been made from people. Long before you, bro. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Your parents, beyond your parents, your cut, like it's all like, different people, bro. It's little you going against, you know, hell, 500 cents or, you know, 500 years yep. of like trauma or like, because I mean, like you think about it, you know, just whatever your heritage is, you might come from a country that's a third world country. Yeah, you're yep. in America now, you know, you're breaking soil, but it's like your family lived in a third world country for the past. 10x or hell, I guess since forever, if you're the first one here, you know what I mean? Yep. Or like, you know, even like with the, uh, being black and coming from slave hair to like, mm-hmm. just it just depends on what it is or what your struggle was. You're not just breaking chains that were formed. And then on top of that, you're breaking chains that you've learned over the past 20, 30, or however many years since you've been born on top of everything from your past. Oh, yeah. It, it, it really is one of those things that's like you can't lean on your own understanding, so to say. So for me, like, I, I really believe in this stuff. Like, mm-hmm. if you, 
if you are in a position where your parents or your mentors in your life haven't necessarily broke through financially, like, you know what I'm saying? And right. like they're, they have wealth. Right. I, I ultimately do believe like you have a ton of pressure to be to like on yourself and that yeah. pressure, then you're trying to figure out all your trauma, all this shit. And to your point, some people got some heavy bags. They do. You know what I'm saying? Do, like man. way heavier than some other people. Right. Like when, it, when we're talking slavery, this and that, like, bro, these bags are like cinder blocks. They are cinder blocks. You know man. what I'm saying? I mean, you know, like, cause these mindsets, man, like they are inherited. You know, you're not born, like, you know, but I, for example, I was like six, seven year old, seven, six, seven years old, bro. My mom had a hoopty. Mm -hmm. I didn't even want her to drop me off in school because it's like, I'm six or seven years old. I don't, I mean, I didn't know about nicer cars, but I knew this was a hoopty. Yep. It's like, I was innocent, man. Like, I didn't know better. So where I learned that shit from? You know, like, it had to come from somewhere. And it's like, that's the same mindset that was hindering me until that day I had that, when I said I broke down on the way to my girlfriend for 30 minutes. That was the same thing that was hindering me when I was six, seven, you know, I'm not when my mom dropped me off, mm -hmm. to being, you know, 20, I'm 25, so I was 24, actually. This was, like, back in August, September, when I had, like, that mental breakthrough of how great, uh, ungrateful I was. I had to be delivered from it, so to say. And, um, you know, like, I... That must have been a big, big bro, fucking moment, bro. Because bro. <laughs> if you ain't grateful... Because like, think about it, it's like, oh, yeah, your mom is a hoopty, but you're getting driven to school. Exactly, but I'm you know six I'm or seven. Yeah, you know, like, how did I even know to think like that? Like, That's why didn't I just think, <laughs> like, I'm going to AV? But see, you know, it, it's just crazy, bro. Because I mean, like... My guy's six, like, mom, don't drop me off. Like, Yeah, do me on the street, you know. I'm not trying to <laughs> yeah. be seen in this Toyota that's 10, 20 years old. But, you know, it, it's just crazy, bro, some of the stuff we learn. But it, oh it, it's... My God. It, it's you know, I wasn't around wealth, but I didn't even know about like, you know, nice cars or like, I, I remember in high school when I first got me like a, some new friends and like they came up with money kind of, mm -hmm. they would be talking about Gucci and like, you know, uh, just, uh, I can't think of, like, you know, LV or Designer like, you know, shit, just yeah. whatever it may be. And um, Dior, and it's like, I had to go get on game. Like I didn't grow up around this shit. I didn't even know what Dior was a few weeks ago. You know, let me go, let me go learn about my friend. Like he would be like talking about, oh, that's Dior bag. Go yard, you know, whatever. Oh, that's 5,000. I was like, I just, I just, he just pulling it out of his head. But that's like, a mindset. I wasn't around it, you know, yeah. and like, you know, I know that's a little bit more materialistic, but it just goes to show us like I had no examples of wealth until like I hit high school, college. I didn't even know I can get rich till 2019. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was so passionate about trading, man, because like I literally thought at best, I was an air traffic controller, my salary to pop, topped out about 180, 200K by the time I was 40. I wanted to get into real estate. Best case scenario prior to 2019, I thought I could make 400K by 40. Mm -hmm. 2019, I saw about trading, man, and I was so obsessed and committed because I was like, bro, I don't have to work for the rest of my life? I thought I could work till 40, which was still 20 years, I'm 21. Mm. Yep. You know, and it's like, you know, work nine to five, da, da, da. It's like, but it's, it was still miserable to me. So mm -hmm. I was like, once I learned that I could get wealthy it was all or nothing. I just need to know I could do it, mm -hmm. you know. And it's like I was fully committed. So do you know why the I'm I'm because so, I'm trying to think deeply about like nine to fives and and jobs, right? And mm -hmm. I had this realization lately that uh, this whole like revolution of like people hating on nine to five. I mean, people always hate nine to five, right. but like now it's really you know there's it's a whole culture bigger. behind it. Yeah. But like I was like, holy shit, because I run the funded trader, right? right? And we're building a great company and shit. Right. But like, bro, that. We're taking a lot of risk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like are. we're building this shit from the ground up. Like we're doing so much work. Like there's so much sacrifice in terms yeah. of like my time, my energy, all that. That's and I commend it. You get I respect it. I'm sorry to cut you off, but you're giving yeah. a lot of people opportunity, man. Like even this, you know, mm -hmm. but uh that's all I want to say. But like look, but like listen, so I, I have come to this realization in, in running this company, right? We have I don't know how many however many employees, right? Sixty plus employees, right? right. I've come to this realization, I'm like, holy shit. I have been able to build a company like a big company and this is great and everything but at the and at the same time if you're if you're in a family that has a good stability and a good foundation and maybe does have a little bit of wealth having a 9 to 5 if you do have that like wealth behind you is actually a blessing because right. you don't have to worry about all this extra bullshit. Right. Because you're just you get to the nine to five. That nine to five is stable. It's <laughs> JP Morgan Chase, whatever the fuck it is. It's a huge company, stable mm -hmm. company. You know, they're going to continue to be around. They're worrying about all the shit that really is stressful. Right. You're, you're just sitting there nine to five, clock out. You get to have a nice social life. You know what I'm saying? Family life, all this. Like nine to fives, low key 
for certain people are oh, yeah. like a move. I but for, if you're agree. coming from like the middle class, yeah. nine to five is like slavery. Right. And it, you know, it's all about what you want too. You know, like I'm not downing the nine to five. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just know that I didn't want to work 40 hours a week for a few thousand dollars. You know, I wanted to. This is know. the vibe, bro. This is why This is why the nine to five, if you're in the middle class, is, is fucking slavery. Because the U.S. dollar is not worth what it used to be, right? At all. What was inflation, so, like 10%? No, yeah. 10%? So the U.S., since the U.S. dollar is shit, and if you, even if you work, bro, from fucking, like, what is the t- retirement age for average nine to five? Fucking 50, 60. 55, 60? You, yeah, more you like 60, 65. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that's why that shit is a scam. Like, if you have wealth and behind you and you work nine to five, you know, a nice little career, 20, 25 years, you have balance, you work till 45, right. and then you're out, like, that's a good life, you know right. what I'm saying? But like, if you gotta, if you think working a nine to five until sixty that you're gonna have money to retire and then to live until like ninety five or ninety, that's a good and be, point. And be like comfortable, like you're fucked. And don't even think about trying to take care of other people. Right. And the thing <laughs> is, let's say best case scenario, your four hundred one k gets you about one. Let's just say one million. I think you could probably get about. And that's really good. You yeah, know, yeah. Consider what they consider. That'd be solid. But you know. You live, you could spend $50,000 a year for 20 years and you broke. Mm-hmm. So it's like you worked, what, 40 years to save up a million dollars to invest it, basically. Because if you don't invest it, you, the money won't even last. You got to invest right. it in some. So it's like, right. you know, why wait till I'm 60? Then you two, you're you really not even, you're not trying to go to Europe and you're not trying to find a 10 hour flight, you know, for mm-hmm. at 70 years old. Well, that's why inflation is so bad because it, if you do have like a 401k or whatever and you have a million dollars, I mean, yeah. You can invest that with a financial advisor. Right. They they could return. People don't know this. Like you could return maybe five six percent a year. You have a million right. dollars. You're Which getting you sixty k a year. You know you're you're big chilling. But then if inflation's seven percent, or it's, even if infl- inflation's three percent on average right. over twenty years, you know you're not making six percent. You're making three percent. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like inflation's like really a big deal. And it like is. obviously with the U S. I mean, who knows what's gonna happen? But there's a lot lot of uncertainty around it so what i'm trying to get at is like all right if you don't have a bag behind you right because you don't have generational wealth you you're going to be poor like right. realistically and, and you know, i don't want to say you're going to be poor like you're going to be you're but gonna, it's going to get harder to, like look at it now man yeah. like, it's going to get harder to keep up yeah you're gonna have to live pretty frugally um, <laughs> all right you're not gonna live you're gonna be in abundance when it comes to your exactly. your financials and that's why TFT, like the whole branding and all this, the kingdom, this and that, you know, build your empire. Well, this is, it's all about like, yo, like you need to have the income, your income become exponential. Like you yeah. need to have this breakthrough and you need to like, you need to, yeah, you might not be successful now, but you need to do the things that you need to do in order to become successful. You know right, what I'm saying? You got to right. be all in on that idea. And with TFT, it's like, if you d- choose to go down that path, you know what I'm saying? You choose your journey to be that way. Ultimately, there is a reward at the end of the tunnel. You can, right, you'll agree. get paid for what you deserve. Like that's right. what the company is all about, and it's the the theme medieval this and that. Like people, you know, hate on it to some extent, but like, listen, this is like real life. Do you want to build an empire right. or not? You know what Look, I'm saying? The payouts like, talk. Let them, say, <laughs> let them say what they say. I mean, you know, it, money's flowing. The money's flowing. So you yeah. know, there's fruits right here being, uh, you know, being grabbed. For sure, man. For sure. So for you, like, what's the, do you give us a bit of the strategy, like okay. the trading strategy? Let's hear it. Uh, man, so I'll say this. I really, I jumped from strategy to strategy, but my main thing was always pretty much focusing on the naked charts. I never really did too many indicators. I have an 8 and 21 EMA and MA on my uh, on my chart that I keep there, kind of just to help with momentum that I base off the, I was going to say the higher time frame, considering the 15 minute, but the hourly. But anyways, mm-hmm. um, right now, and what I pretty much done, where I found consistency for about the past six, seven months, um, was really in like supply and demand. I trade from about six to ten a.m. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and um, that's really just because like the markets that midweek reverse. So I guess I see it on that intraday, uh, you know, on the intraday swings mm-hmm. whenever it comes in on Wednesday and Friday with the volume down. Down, I'm just not too much fond of it. But uh, basically, all I'm trading is I'm following the fifteen minute minute trend. Hopefully, in confluence with the four hour or in some shape way or form, if I'm looking for the correction on a four hour, then, you know, and I see the 15 minute trending down, then I'll be a little more inclined to take the 15 minute shorts. Uh, but basically, uh, if the four hours obviously uh, impulsing in the direction of the trend, I'm going to look for the uh, impulse. Mm-hmm. But uh, I want to see the 15 minute align with the four hour structure. And then I'm pretty much entering on uh, supply and demand during the New York session. So you're mainly trading the morning session. You're using multiple time frame analysis. Mm-hmm. You have some MAs on there. 
What is uh like okay, let's hear like a recent trade that you took. What was like the signal to enter on the trade? Um was it price action? Was it this? Was it that? So with price act, it's kind of weird. I mean, you know, for a, a recent trade I've taken, I'm trying to think, I think it was a GU, I took a GU short, or what I took you, a GU buy last Monday. Was it last Monday? I think I took, I took a GU buy last Monday. I had actually got prematurely wicked out, man. I had a 10 pip stop, uh, so I had to re-enter. Mm -hmm. So I had a 10 pip stop, uh, and it wicked me out by like a pip, and then it ended up giving me a 5R on the position. But uh, as far as price action, I'm only big on exhaustion for the most part, like wicks, you know, like wicks don't lie, so to say, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty much big on exhaustion. And then uh, I'm not really so much looking for price action on the lower time frames because with supply and demand, you're just looking for the zone to get tapped. Mm -hmm. The zone gets tapped, you know, I'm looking for a candle to close in the, the direction I'm trying to take it, and then I'm going to see the, the, the body or the wick of that candlestick broken. But as far as the price action goes, man, like some of the most beautiful setups would be like, Let's say price rallies, and so the demand or supply zone is broken, so I have to find another one, or you know, base it off that supply or demand zone, and then the four hour comes back down and exhaust hard, and then I get the fifteen minute signal. Oh, that's gold! <laughs> like it's it's pretty much over. I will, I'd risk the whole account. No, not really, but you know, what I mean, like that was one of those trades. <laughs> it's like I I can take that trade and walk away, and I have to look back at it because that four hour exhaustion. You know, you can't really necessarily enter on it because it'll it'll give me too big of a stop loss. I'm looking for like nothing bigger than a thirty pip stop most time. Mm -hmm. But uh, on GJ, GU. Uh, but GJ is a crazy pair. She is crazy. Yeah, man. you know she, what I'm saying? She likes to move. She yeah. is fluid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my she God. She was pissing me off like maybe a, the past week or two or a couple of weeks because our, uh, she was trying to trend up, but she would just range, range, range during New York and then finally take off and then come back and range and just like finally take off. But... I, for some reason, I just always drifted towards GJ. I was always pulled towards GJ. So, I mean, I've been studying GJ pretty much since I first started trading. It's been one of the most consistent pairs I've had. What other pairs you you look at? Um, so, GJ, GU, uh, I recently put AU down. Mm -hmm. uh, I never really understood this, but Q Banks said it, man. He uh, Q Banks, he used to trade one pair at a time, and he started with AU. Mm -hmm. And um, he used to say, I remember whenever he left AU alone, he would go back and say, like, she just got too slow. Mm -hmm. So he said he had to kind of, like, move on. That's when I, I think he moved to UJ. And uh, so I kind of get what he was saying with AU. Like, she'll, you know, you'll see the setup coming, but it's just, like, you kind of are thinking ahead of the market in a sense, like, um, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but AU, AU is super slow. She is slow. Yeah. But she does form some nice market structure. So you took Q's course? I didn't, but didn't? Okay. I studied a lot of Q's uh, paid. I, I never took anyone's course mm. off the fact that I thought everyone was a scammer, yep. even Q, you know, at one yeah, point. Yeah. But I would follow him a lot. Like, I would see his lives. I would get on Instagram, and I've uh, I've watched his Confluence videos on YouTube. Okay. So he's got, like, four or five or three or four Confluence videos on Those YouTube. Those are good videos. Though. They are. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, Because he's big into the... I actually want, dude. I, originally, when I t got into forex, I bought his course, mm -hmm. Q's course. That was like the first course that I looked at, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't really look at any other courses. I just looked at his, <laughs> I don't learned, learned TA, and like you know what I'm saying. And yeah. then from there, I met like other traders, and then I just started working with them and like learn because he doesn't teach risk management at right, all. You at know all. what I'm saying? It's like, but his risk management, I think, is like not his thing. <laughs> I think he risked like ten percent of trades, something the like that. The thing I no. never understood about him was. Uh, always the scaling in on the orders. Like yeah. he, he was like scaling in, <laughs> but there was no like methodology behind it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like everyone would always wonder, like, how does he scale in? And yeah. like we'd ask him, but like he'd never explain it. Yeah, you know what right, I'm saying? Exactly. So I'm like, and it's like I, I'm I still don't scale in, man. Right? Like I just yeah. gotta hope my first entry is good. You know, I gotta yeah. get my risk in on my first entry because the scaling in, I've always I never had success with it because it's like oh scale in. Oh, so of course this is the last impulse. You know, and it's like now she's retracing, so now I got one order in drawdown. You know, she only got to go down halfway for me to be in drawdown on a whole. You know, I feel like I that's like there, there's like seven wonders of the world. The eighth, <laughs> the eighth <laughs> wonder is like how to skew scaling. <laughs> Yo, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, I used to watch all his videos, and he's like, you like he's sell, 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 like that. I'm like, bro, like what was the sign? Yeah, that? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Bro, you just gotta have confidence. I'm like, damn. <laughs> like, all right, that's a bar. I'll take it. Look, yeah, I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that. That was. I don't know. He's he's definitely done a lot for the industry, bro. Yeah, he for has. Sure. I got mad respect for you, man. And I'll tell you this too. That was actually so. So all right. So let's go back to 2019, right? Mm -hmm. Mid 2019, I got serious about trading, man. I was going through hell, bro. Like I had this girl I was talking to. 
Uh, I was going through a lot in the time, so we didn't work out. Uh, I had a I had a five zero Mustang like a twenty nineteen or mm -hmm. uh, twenty eighteen, brand new, pretty much had like ten thousand miles on I think, and um, totaled the car, had it for six months. The girl, you know, she kind of like left me hanging, and then in the midst of that, I was in between getting my job from uh, the training, so I was on like a two month period where I wasn't getting paid. Anyways, this is one reason why I do have mad respect for Q, man. October. 2019, he had his first hundred thousand dollar day, mm -hmm. and that was a day where I was like, "Oh hell, this this is what you could do." Mm -hmm. Like I had never seen, I, you know, in our mail they always be like, "Oh, we did 500 pips this week." If you'd have went in with a standard, I thought a standard was the biggest lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, "You going with a standard? Oh, you could have made 5k this week. It sounds good, good mm -hmm. money. I'm not discrediting it, but hundred thousand dollars in a day is a lot different from 5k in a week, and nobody actually doing the 5k. You know, I was seeing it. Yeah. So when I saw him do that hundred thousand uh, dollars in a day, man, it really just you know, like he really sparked a different fire and it was like, it hasn't died since. It sounds like the devil was prevalent. He was at real that time. prevalent. He was <laughs> at that real time. prevalent. You know what I'm saying? He was lurking <laughs> closely, bro. Well, Cause it's like, man, I was going through it. But you know, like you said earlier, man, I, I really agree with it, man. That test, and I didn't have my breakthrough per se then, mm -hmm. but my mindset had shifted when I saw that because it just, you know, it raised my financial thermos that it told me what was possible. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that was, you know, I had got hit with like four or five different tests, but when I saw Q make that, that $100,000 in a day, man, it, it woke me up. Like mm -hmm. I really was like, okay. Inspiration, it yeah. Was, I needed that, man. Yeah. And that's why I'm big. Uh, like I have on my Instagram, I have like my journey. I've, I've started building the, uh, the highlights of posts. I started posting a few of my profits and chart markups and stuff like that because, you know, I don't know where I'm going to go on the educational side, but I do want to be that person who inspires the next person to keep going, man, because mm -hmm. life is hard. And, Super man, hard, With bro. this money, but that you can make from trading, whether you want to pour it in, a, you know, just charities, like doing what you're doing, like giving opportunity mm -hmm. out or, you know, like, you know, churches, whatever you want to do with the money, man, like. I know if you come up on trading, man, like I feel like you have to have that personality to where it's in good hands. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna you get don't back. trade. You're gonna make, get back, bro. You, if you come are, up on trading. Because it's it's yeah. so hard, you know, yeah. and it's like I I don't mind, you know, I, I want to put myself on that pedestal so I can help people and stuff like that, you know. And so uh because it's like what Q did, man, that was a pivotal point in my life. Mm -hmm. With just him posting a hundred thousand dollars in a day. Yeah, I don't know. That's why I don't hate on these guys at all. You know, right. at, the, at the same time, I know there's a lot of lies and a lot of stuff out there. But at the same time, like at the core of it, bro, the the inspiration is a huge. And it dude, is. I was pulled in like in the beginning. How did I even find out about this shit? Yeah, maybe I would have found out eventually mm -hmm. on some other way. But I saw a Q on Instagram. Like it, right. he had like twenty thousand followers, and he was <laughs> oh, he was like still... posting his fucking Porsche <laughs> yeah. at the time. You know what I'm saying? Have and you... showing these little little lots and everything. But like it was that was inspiration for me. It was like here's this guy, you know, Jamaican dude, yeah. super confident, you know, super locked in, like talking about college, fuck the teacher, this <laughs> and that. You know what I'm saying? But like yeah, I resonate. Yeah. It all resonates like a lot with me and like everyone else. It's like oh, you've had a all these people in your life telling you that you can't be something. Right. And he was like just a guy that was like, nah, fuck that. You yeah. could be you could be whatever you want to be. That character is an important role in in our society. It bro. is. It is. And it's crazy you say that because like you saw it live. You know, I had to scroll back. Cause I mean, at this point, his first hundred thousand dollar day, I want to say he had like a hundred thousand. He got a hundred thousand followers, a hundred thousand dollar day all at the same time. Right. So that was when I got on. So like, you know, I go back and look at I mean, like, you know. He consistently posts. I mean, like I go back and see his, you know, hundred dollar days, twenty dollar days, and he's talking mm -hmm. about AU. And like I'm looking at the lots, I'm like fifteen pips, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm not downing it. But I know he's not a scalper, so it's like you know, just looking at it, it's like okay. And I go back and look, it's like okay, hundred fifty dollars. You know, he's making okay. Now he's making five hundred consistently. And then he have like a three thousand dollar day. And I remember his breakout moments when he made that thirty thousand dollars in a week. I think on the UJ, it was like a huge four hour UJ swing. I think he mm -hmm. said or day, it turned into a daily swing. Probably mm -hmm. it was so big, but um. You know, like I, I seen him do the hundred dollar days, the thousand to hundred. I mean, I've seen him do a million dollars in a week. So it's mm -hmm. like, it, it just shows you what's possible, and it really does pour back into the people behind you, man. Because it's like this, you can scroll on Instagram and see he was doing hundred dollar days. Mm -hmm. You know, to now. Yeah. So. Yeah, I took his I took his four day course uh, <clears throat> exactly like four years ago. Okay, damn. Or five day, whatever. Yeah, four years ago. So May twenty nineteen. Wow. Yeah, it was when I took his five day course. I was going through hell then. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, you were in the gutter. We, we, we looked up in the gutter. We're like, oh, there's Jordan up there. You're <laughs> like, oh, gonna drop soon. Don't worry. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, he, he's an important character in all of this for for sure. You know, definitely gets a lot of hate from some people that yeah. think he's lying, whatever this and that. 
facts of the matter is the guy's paid he's got money out the ass right. out the wazoo and <laughs> you ain't hate you can't be hating on that can't you know, hate on the fruit you know what uh, i'm saying like it's all it's all right there so talking about like inspiration like where in regards to like other people in your life like who who are you looking to impact you know what i'm saying but like why are you doing all this at the end of the day you want the, the long answer you we'll <laughs> take we'll take whatever answer you want to give us out here Man, I, I try to give it to you. I try to say all of it. Man, it's a really a lot, bro. I mean, like, uh, uh, man. Okay, so I'll just open up a little bit. Uh, the we'll we'll start a little bit on the on the word. So, like, I mean, my friends, man. Like, my friends, bro. They have my back. I got two friends in general, uh, are in short, and they, mm-hmm. man, they have my back like this whole time through our trade. I mean, like, I'm talking about like giving me money. You know, paying me bills, uh, and this isn't why I started, but this was a, a reason that developed over time. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm get back to the reason I started. But uh, man, they had my back throughout everything, man. Like you know, they gave me money and everything, like you know, just whatever I needed. It's like they had my back, and they trade too. Or uh, well, one of them trades, the other one uh, just works. They both work though, so it's like, man, they, they just kind of like I don't know the, uh, the level of respect for me, man. It's like I really, you know, I want to see all of us be on the top. Um, of course, my girl, man, my girl, like she is the person I really feel God used to teach me to be present. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's like, even though quitting my job came with so much pain, man, like I got wealth out of it that I didn't know I needed. You know what I mean? Like I quit my job for the monetary, but it's, I got a relationship with God. I mean, I got, you know, a girl I couldn't have imagined. You know, I got, you know, I'm wealthy in relationships, friends, everything like that. Uh, but... Uh, you know, of course, they now have a couple little sisters too. You know, I want to I want to give them a better life. Uh, one of them is actually my mom's daughter, who mm. my mom died when I was fifteen, man. And um, I watched her suffer from drug addiction and stuff like that a lot, man. Like uh, I didn't exactly know what's going on. I was mm. really young, but I seen her suffer a lot. Her mom killed herself when she was thirteen. So, you know, while she was in that period of her life transitioning from a little girl to a woman, you know, she was left with her dad, who. You know, he, he kind of got better off of life, but, like, he just wasn't the best father to and stuff like that. So, like, that whole side of my family tree, man, is scorn, uh, scorched, basically, from just drug addiction, like, depression, anxiety, and stuff like that. So, my ultimate reasoning, man, uh, one day what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, uh, basically what I want to see myself do is I want to open up charities and I want to open up counseling and therapy uh, clinics around the states. And, um Basically, I want to be able to have it non-profitable and I want to be able to pour money into it so that I can give back and I can see some of these people who don't have the resource. I basically want to find the people that my mom needed and put them in the communities where there's people going through the same stuff my mom went through or, you know, me with losing a parent, like, you know, and basically like drug addiction, you know, depression, anxiety, man. Just, you know, I want to basically try to give back and uh, ultimately source it and pour into it all on my own. Uh, Not all on my own, of course, you know, other stuff, but... I want to build the empire through real estate and other stuff. Trading is just a vehicle. Yep. Uh, but to basically, you know, so it's completely self-sustainable. Um, that's, that's awesome, man. That's my my deepest why. But. That's awesome. And I think because I'm in a similar position to you in regards to like, there's certain things that I want to create, not only for my, my family, but I want to use what went wrong in my family, but right. what also went right. I want to use that and I want to... Uh, to your point, either build some sort of service or charity, whatever, so I can give back to the people that are also being impacted by that bad thing that went on with my life because you don't want other people to go through that. But, like, at the same time, um, that stuff happening, it really really is what it is, right? It's out of your control, um, but you do have the ability to rise up and to, you know, help out others. Um, I think one of the... One of the realizations I had, man, now that I have some money is like, is the reality, the reality, bro, is that in our society, you feel as though you need to wait until you have money to do, to You're help. Right. You You're know right. what I'm saying? And and it's not like, all right, if you don't have money, yeah, you can't start a huge charity, like a huge nonprofit. The impact might not be that big, but you could help out a friend, help right. out a neighbor. You know what I'm saying? And like, you know, to cap or, you know, to add to that, man, and I... You know, and that's why I just, man, I got to give my girl a lot of credit, man, because she just really was that light I needed, man. Like, I mean, I was going through hell even when we got together. And it's like, I would go to her apartment, but now it's the only ray of sunshine I'd have. And so, uh, you know, that transitioning from that or growing from that, man, it's like crazy because uh, she actually lost her her older sister who uh, had two kids. Um, one of them was actually 15 or 16. And the other one was 12, man. It's like... uh. <clears throat> it's just crazy because, like, you know, I'm really adamant a job just trying to be around from and, like, you know, grieve and, like, just be, you know, a little bit of, of hope, I guess, of light, you know, mm-hmm. because it's like, 
man, that pain of losing your parent, man, like your mom, whatever the case may be, it's, it's, it's really, it hits deep. It really cuts deep. So it's like, you know, I, you know, what else came from my girlfriend was basically just kind of like seeing myself be in that position to be able to have that, you know, that influence. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, like you're saying, it's like, it really isn't always about the money because there's always somewhere, in, you know, around the corner, you know, even if you give them a bottle of, a bottle of water, mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot of homeless people out here, you know, whatever the case may be, that you can still reach back. And, uh, you know, I, it took me pretty much, man, I'll say seven, eight months ago, I learned that lesson. You know, I, yeah. I'm thinking I had to be rich to help. Well, you're everyone. still super young, man. I mean, well, you're right. 21, right? 20, 20, 23? What 25. are you? 25. 25. Yeah. I thought you were 21 for some reason. Nah, I started you're trading 25. when I was 21, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you're 25. So, it's like, there, I mean, we're, I'm 27. It's like, we're still young. Okay, Both right, of us right. are still pretty young. You right, know what I'm right. Saying? So, there's a lot for us to, to continue to learn. Um, And at the end, bro, at the end of the day, like, the stuff that the stuff that you're saying, like man, there's just so much depth to it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. it's real, it's real, and that's why again I go back to TFT. It's like listen, losing a parent, bro. Like your your family is so important. It is, bro. You know it, what I'm saying? And that's why if you realize that your family might be broken or right. this or that, you know what I'm saying? Like the most important part of your legacy, in my opinion, is resurrecting. It. You know yeah, what I'm that's saying? A good point, right. That's the most important part of your legacy because. At the end of the day, if you don't have family, you don't really have nothing. You don't, bro. <laughs> like, have you ever seen Breaking Bad? Yeah, yeah. So you've watched the whole series? Yeah, yeah. Bro, I mean, like, I literally rewatched the last three episodes of the other day, man. It's just like, he had $80 million, right? $80 million in these oil barrels, right? You know what I'm saying? Six of them. And it's like, I did the math. It was like $14 million a barrel. You know, mm -hmm. they took, the, the guys robbed him, took five. He still left them one. But it's $14 million in there. Yep. And it's like, man, his, he had stage four lung cancer. You know, like, he didn't have his wife, his, his kids. You know, it's just like... I was like, man, I don't have twelve million dollars, but it's like, man, I got some friends that I know got my back forever. You know, I got a, you know, the girl, my girl, she always, you know, my family. It's like you really can, you are wealthy, with, even without the monetary value. You know, depending, oh yeah, you know. So I think that that's why I tie this. You were saying before um, that basically you need you have these like breakthroughs, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's like a breakthrough financially. You know what right. I'm saying? And for me, uh, one of those breakthroughs was, um, it was this idea, like I was struggling with trading, I was struggling with working and all this stuff. And I shifted my mindset where I, I associated success with just the idea that I was working towards a goal. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because before that, I was just like, fuck, I lost this trade. Like, fuck, I, I'm not making any money. Like, yeah. I'm a failure right. until I, I make money. Right. I'm a failure. So I switched that and I was like, nah, like the fact that I'm even grinding this is the success. Like I'm committed. Right. And this activity of me being committed is is success. Like that's the mindset. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. And I and since I made that association, and I still even recite that to this day, then everything became lighter. You know what I'm saying? Like right. I wasn't putting so much pressure on myself. Like I was just enjoying the journey, bro. Like right. a little a little bit more. So those wins, like people are like, oh, I gotta have a hundred hundred k in a day, whatever. Like, right. there's a lot of other wins to have before that, it before is. you can get there. You know and what I'm saying? If you're so focused on it, you won't even get to that point. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta enjoy the, the smaller wins. I mean, it's like going back to the firms, man. It's like you don't even have to be so present as to only start with a few dollars. Because I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I was never one of those. If I could only put a hundred dollars in an account, I didn't want to trade. Like I need to put a few hundred dollars in an account because, yeah. like, if, if I'm trading micros, it's not really exciting. Like you know, if it. I'm not losing money, I didn't even want to keep going for some reason. That's really toxic. But it's like I needed to, to lose money to be motivated. Yeah. So it's like you know, but like with these firms, man, like, how more patient do you want us to, or do you, do you need to be told to be when you you your bottom dollar could be a thousand dollar a day. You know, a fifty k account, one percent, five hundred thousand dollars, one two, one for two, mm -hmm. or even if you trade one for ones, you know. Uh, I mean, bottom dollar five hundred dollars a day. You know, you know, if you're an intraday trader or a trade, whatever the case may be, is still very good money. You know what I mean? Like, yep. it doesn't have to be hundred k a day, but it's nice to aim yep. for it. And for those people that are like, oh, I'll trade hundred dollars. There are people out there that'll be patient enough to trade hundred dollars, right, right? right? I'm not. But I'm if you're not, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then it's like, and they're like, well, then you gotta wait for five hundred and whatever. It's like, all right, then you just get a job. You know what I'm saying? Right, or, exactly. If that's your if that's your thing, like, all right, then you gotta get a job so you can get the five hundred so you can right. trade at the level you want to be at. But I'll say this too. That was also my thought process before the firms. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I was making good money. I made like seventy thousand dollars a year, and mm -hmm. I had like, you know, I was just a bachelor, so mm -hmm. I was able to do it. But uh, you know. When I found out about the firms, now it's like, man, you had that same, because a $200 account will basically get you a 50K account, you know, $25,000 yep. account. So yep. it's like, 
you know, even still now you you can you can still play with those same numbers. And as long as you're finishing in profit, you can just keep repeating it, keep repeating it, you know, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. Yeah, you know, there was a like you were saying uh previously, there was this like about the flips, like you go from six K to three hundred, whatever, like people be doing that. I mean with the prop firms there was a guy on here that did twenty thousand to like two hundred thousand or something. You know what that's I mean? That's crazy. Because yeah. he put in twenty k in challenges, but then he got two hundred k in payouts. Right. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? So, yeah. and that's why people got to stop. You got to stop. And and people listen to this and be like, oh, cause, just because he wants you to buy more challenges. But like, <laughs> you got to stop. You got to stop. Like when you fail a challenge, like you got to stop thinking it's the end of the world. Because I'm telling you, the mo- the people that make the most it's like a spread between how much do you spend on challenges and how much do you get paid i didn't know that they're not passing every challenge you know what i'm saying they're failing this they're getting funded they're failing but they're making that spread where it's like all right the risk reward of me buying challenges versus the payouts that i'm getting is one to five right or something like that and i had a friend he actually traded for top tier which is q's group Mm -hmm. uh i think he had the same like hundred fifty thousand dollars in funding for about a year and a half He's, he's very systematic in his approach to the markets and stuff like that. But uh, it's like a robot. He, he very smart man. He's probably up. one of the most disciplined. He's probably one of the smartest people, I, the smartest person I know. I'll say, Jeez. but he's very disciplined. He had a rough upbringing. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, I think very conservatively. You know, I, I don't think it'll be a problem to be able to manage it for about six or seven, eight months. Like you know, I just think just looking at the market conditions. If you're smart about it, because ultimately, what skews your consistency is the psychology. Mm-hmm. Letting the payouts get to your head or the losses get to your head. You know, it's very easy to list risk uh, risk less mm-hmm. when you're down a couple of percent. You know, in your account. You know, you know. So I mean, it, it, that it's really a straight and narrow. For consistency, the consistency line is really our path is really straight and narrow because teeter tottering to one other side, you can see a losing streak or you know the inconsistent the consistency slip. See, this is so this is why trading is so hard and and, yeah. and and starting a business and having a like a few business partners is actually easier than trading. This is why, 100%. right? Because uh, for example, I'm gonna give you an analogy. Like, um, if I'm just looking at me journaling every day, right? Say mm-hmm. I want to journal every day and. Over the last month, I tried to journal every day, but I missed seven days, right? So that right. those seven days, I chose not to write in my journal for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. So I broke my commitment to that that habit, right? When you're in a business and you have partners, your partners might have journaled that day. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you guys are sharing that, that a commitment together and they're picking up that slack. When you're in trading... If you don't pick up the pen that day, if you don't follow the plan that day, you're fucked. Yeah, it's all on you. It's all on you. It's like, and it really makes you take accountability because it's like, man, Tom, why'd you, oh wait, you know, I did that shit. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> there's no like, bro, you know, I, I saw this, uh, I saw me taking this counter turn instead of, I said I wasn't taking counters anymore. And like, why did I take this? You know, it, it's, mm-hmm. it, it really forces you to mature to a point that, you know, as people are 60, 70, 80 years old, don't mature to, man, like really quick. Cause I mean, I see the average breakthrough in trading from what I've seen. It looks like it's like three to six years. I don't mm-hmm. know if you can attest to that. But, yeah. you know, I mean, that's a lot of growth that's happening in that three to six year period. It could be, you know, if yeah, you choose right. to do the right things, it could, be, <laughs> right. could be none, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. But I, I've, met, I've met people that have been in it 11 years. I've met people that are in it one year. And they know? haven't broke consistency? No, that of 11 years, they're, su- they're successful. One right, year right. is successful. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I mean, uh, to the, some extent. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, it took me four, but yeah, you know, I listen. say unfortunately, but I mean, it's like, man, even to touch the money you touch in trading is like, hell, even if you don't touch it till you're 30, isn't a bad gig. Cause I mean, it's like, you have, you would have never touched it at a W2 job. No. You know, so no. especially for the handoff, man, because it's like, I, and that's another thing I'll say too. I'm glad that my traders mature to this point because I never, I used to trade four hour swings. Mm-hmm. And on those four hour swings, I would have to like, man, like I might, my alert might go off at 4 a.m. So then, then, you know, tomorrow I'm going to go off at 11 p.m. So it's like my sleep schedule was just so skewed and all over the place. But when I finally got to the point to where I could have some consistency in it, it contributed a lot to my consistency too. But it's like, you know, I said to say, you might trade for nine hours out the week and, you know, you might see a full salary out mm-hmm. of it or a year's worth of salary or just a month, someone's monthly salary. It's not time dependent. It's not. And that's, that's the beauty sure. in it because you're yep. shifting things from exchanging time for money to just, it's the skill set strictly making you money. Yep. All right. So to wrap it up, um, what are some goals for you? Um, basic, uh, it's trading goals. Uh, Anything, was, yeah, trading goals. Well, this year I'm going to get into real estate outside of that and financially, I guess. But as far as trading goes, man, my uh, I'm, my main goal is to secure about $500,000 in funding by the end of the year mm-hmm. and hopefully grow my Instagram to the point so I can really market it and basically, you know, find the people who need my help and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um 
that's pretty much it. Is that's really my main priority right now as far as the year goes. Getting five hundred thousand dollars in funding. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you coming out. You I know, being on the pod, it's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, where can people find you? You want to do social links or whatever? Uh, yeah. So my Instagram up? is uh a y e i t s h a r r i s. That's uh a it's Harris. Um, and that's pretty much the only social media platform that I'm really active on. So. Yeah. All right, we're gonna plug you in the description below, guys. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll be on another pod soon, brother. Oh yeah, sounds good. I'll be glad to have you. Thanks for being here. Really Let's get it. Here.